All right, so if you're a content creator or somebody that owns a media company, having backups of the content you create is incredibly important. Now, I'm not talking about keeping content raw uh, because sometimes some of these raw files are massive, although it's not a bad idea to do that, and I've been known to back up certain project files from time to time. But if you're like me, who typically buys a Mac Studio and just buys it with a one terabyte drive and then connects a bunch of drives to it as you go, you'll know that storage is a, at a premium. Now, over the past year, I have been using a network attached storage from Western Digital, which hasn't been the fastest solution. And recently, it's been turning off on me as I think it's been overheating. I haven't had enough time to investigate. I just recently got all of my data off that unit. So I'm gonna be retiring that. However, when I was at CES back in January, I met with the Ugreen team and I got a chance to see their new lineup of network attached storages. This is the DXP2800. It's one of the smaller two bay units. They do offer some four bay units as well and even larger units beyond this, but this is more for consumers. Consumers slash professionals essentially. It's a really nice setup and we're gonna be reviewing it and I'm gonna give you my overall 28 day experience with this. I know it's not a 30 day experience because I've only had this 28 days active, but let's get started. Ugreen did send this over to me, but if you're familiar with any of my videos, you know that never stops me from saying what I really feel about a product. They didn't give me any rules. They didn't give me any restrictions about what I could say. They're not even seeing this video before you watch it yourselves. So there's that. It's a two base system. It has up to eight terabytes of storage in here right now. However, really only four terabytes is usable because I am running it in RAID 1. It's an all aluminum chassis. It's a very well built unit. It has a selection of ports on the backside along with a ethernet cable as well. It has a really nice fan on the backside of here that is also very quiet. This is one of my pain stakes with many network attack storages is the fan is usually very loud or almost too small to actually keep the system cool. And in turn, it ends up running more constantly than actually need it. On the front side, you do have the two base slots, which again, when you do get this and unbox it, you'll find that the bays are not actually loaded. You do have to install your drives. You can buy this without drives and just purchase your own drives, or you can buy this and order it with drives. Now, Ugreen did send me those four terabyte drives. To access them, I'm gonna press this button, pull this lever out, and boom, the drives come out. Now, this is a toolless installation because these drives just simply sort of pop in here just like so. And then there on the inside of here, you have these little pins that will connect directly into the drive itself where screws would normally go. To install this, you just wanna simply line these up very easily, pull them apart, and then clip it into place just like that. And voila, your drive is ready to go. And then just reinsert it back into the network attached storage itself. Now I do wanna point out on the left-hand side of here, you do have access to two M.2 slots and there's just some pull tabs. You just slide your drive in, clasp it back down, slide your drive in, clasp it back down. It's a really interesting and very, very unique setup. So you can have M.2 drives along with some SATA drives as well for maximum storage capability. Now this setup can run up to, I believe it's 24 terabytes. Alrighty, so hey there, Ken from the future here, and I do wanna go ahead and make an amendment when it comes to the storage. I did talk to Ugreen and they did say that this does have a capability of 52 terabytes of maximum storage. So I was definitely off by half, and I guess I missed the little area where it said times two. That would make sense as to why the storage can contain up to 52 terabytes. But there you go. That's the actual actual storage specification, which is pretty crazy because this is technically on the surface level, only a two bay system, not including the M.2 slots. Pretty impressive. And then as it comes to the RAID setup, I do wanna talk about that really briefly. You do have a couple of different options. It is recommended to run this in a RAID 1 setup, which essentially will replicate the data from one drive to another. So if one drive fails, you will still be able to maintain that data. If you run this in a RAID 0, which means that you're essentially using the full terabyte of storage. So let's say if you have 52 terabytes, you want data installed on all drives and make it as a 52 terabyte storage. That means if a drive fails, you would lose data. So it is recommended to run this in RAID 1 for maximum redundancy. Okay, I hope that clarifies things. 
back to the video. So let's go over the specifications of this particular unit. So inside of here, we have a brand new 12th generation Intel end core processor. We're up to four cores, four threads. It's incredibly fast, it's super snappy. It has eight gigs of installed RAM, but you can expand it to up to 16 gigs of RAM, and that's DDR5 RAM, so it's the latest generation of RAM. It also has 32 gigs of onboard storage as well. That's what the operating system is going to run on. We'll take a, a walk over to the computer and I'll show you the interface because I think the interface is the most impressive aspect of this new setup itself. Then of course we have a plethora of ports on the front side here. We have USB type A, USB C, which is great for that direct data transfer. If you're going to plug this directly into a computer, you're gonna to wanna to use that USB type C. It's going to give you that fastest data transfer up to 10 gigs of transfer speeds. On the back side, we do have a USB 2.0 two of those, we have another USB 2.0 HDMI port, and then of course a LAN cable where you can plug this directly into your modem and keep this as a network attached storage. The power supply is not built into the unit. It is a separate power supply, which is great. That means it's going to keep this unit very small, also keep it very efficient as well. It's not gonna get hot because when you have a built-in power supply into these network attached storages, they tend to get very warm and it's just one more factor that you have to worry about failing. If this power supply fails, you can just replace it by easily plugging in another one. It's really nice. So it does have HDMI, which brings up a very unique point. You can plug this directly up to a monitor, connect a keyboard, connect a mouse, and use it as its own separate storage interface, which is really, really unique. Thanks to that 12th generation processor, it's very, very snappy. And you're gonna see when we're actually operating it, from the computer, just how snappy and how intuitive this interface actually is. Overall, this is designed for somebody who is not familiar with network attached storages to walk you through the process with ease. That's what this is really for. All right, so now we're in the main office area and I'm just gonna go ahead and sort of walk you through the overall interface so you can take a look at what it looks like and just how simple it is to actually use. So there is an application, you can go ahead and download it. You can download it for both Windows and Mac. I have a Mac version here, so I'll just show you that version of the application. And it's uh, the Ugreen Network Attached Storage. And uh, I just basically went to the website, downloaded the DMG and installed it. Now you can either use a Ugreen Cloud account, but I have my account set up locally. I am not using anything that has any access to the cloud-based solution that Ugreen offers. One of the nice things about this service is you do not need to use a cloud account like you do with other network attached solutions. So for me, it feels a little bit more secure than having something that is open to the outside world. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just do a LAN search. And what this will do is find where my network attached storage is. Of course, it is already connected to the Mac as well. So you can actually browse it through the actual file browsing system as well if you don't wanna use the application. I find the application is a little bit more intuitive, but again, everybody may have their own, uh, own thoughts on that. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and enter in my uh, admin account, and then I'll enter in my password. and then we'll go ahead and log in. So the interface is pretty much dead simple. I love the way this layout actually is. It does not feel like a network attached storage solution. It feels more like a little mini computer more than anything. It really reminds me a lot of Samsung Dex with the overall layout. Up at the top, you have a little app browser, home button, you can see the intensity and workload on the processor and RAM of the storage device. You have a notification center, and then of course, you can actually see if there's been files uploaded recently, which I uploaded a couple of files. And then you can also take a look at system services. Those are where you'll get the notifications for new updates. There is an update available, which I'll install after I do this tutorial. We also have an account center. This account center is where you can make changes to your administrator account, or you can restart or shut down the system and even take a look at the client version. So if we click on the client version, this will show us what we have here. And if we wanted to check for updates, we can go ahead and check for updates. And it's telling me that the app version is up to date and we are running the latest. 
If you want to make changes to the overall network attached storage, like the sleep settings, the power settings, that's all going to be done under the control panel. And like I said, it's very, very intuitive. It's super, super easy. So if I go into hardware and power, I can change the buzzer setup. I can change the cooling fan options. Right now, I just have it set to common, which is just... You know, it's just the regular setting. It's not super high. It's not super low. I mean, I keep this office relatively pretty cool, so I don't think I need to have it um, have it super, super high. You can also change the LED uh, indicator brightness. Those are those toggle indicators that let you know when their data is loading or um, information is trading back and forth between the server and your computer. Um, you can change those settings to whatever you need them to be. I just keep mine uh, basically... Uh, at 100 because I can't even see it. It's over in the corner. On the power settings, you can actually have this to where it'll auto boot after power on. You can also have it wake on LAN. I didn't change anything on that. I also don't have any uh, power saving settings on. By default, this will put hard disks to sleep. So if there's one setting I could recommend changing is come into here and have it to where the hard disks do not sleep after a period of time. Now there's pros and cons to doing this. Obviously, Allowing your hard disks to go to sleep after a period of time will prolong the life of them. But honestly, for me, I need them to be readily available when I need to recall on them. So because of that, I don't have them where they go to sleep. Now, it won't affect the performance of being able to access the drive because, again, remember, the operating system is installed on its own separate drive system but it will need to wake the main drives in order to access that data. So keep that in mind. It's sort of a trade-off, essentially, long life or faster read times. So I chose the faster read times in doing so. But overall, this is the interface. It's very, very simple to use, very simple to navigate. There's also an App Center, which I think is pretty cool if you want to integrate other applications directly into this. As of right now, there's not much in here other than like a sync and backup. There's no Dropbox or Google Drive on here if you wanted to integrate those solutions. But I can see eventually more applications will become available. In order to access the file manager aspect, you simply click on the file manager. And then you can go ahead and create as many folders as you need. In this instance, I have a main file already created called Apex Imaging Project Storage. This is where I push all my project storage for anything that I've done recently. I have an Apex Photo Backup, which I'm predominantly pushing most of my projects to. This is where I really back up most of my files. And then, of course, I have a couple of other projects. I have my uh, Final Cut project. And then I have the raw files for the Final Cut project stored right here. If I wanted to really stress test this, I could transfer all of my files that I have, which is just over two and a half gigs. So let's try the two and a half gig file. So that's 135 files. And you can see it's identifying them all individually because it's reading each individual file since it's not in a zip folder. Um, and it's going pretty quickly. So we're transferring just at about 351 kilobytes per second. Again, that's cross network. This is not a super fast network. You're not going to be able to edit directly off of a network attached storage. So if that was something you were hoping to do, that's not going to be the case. You would want to be hardwired to directly edit. This is predominantly just for backing up the files. I will tell you this is much faster than backing up files to Dropbox. Uh, this moves a lot faster. So there you go. That was two and a half gigs. Just in the time that I was talking, we've already uploaded all those files. So if I look over here, look at my folder for the 17th. This is where I have four different projects. I have Edge Hill, Shenandoah, Waterfall Drive. So these are just some uh, projects that I put in here. Uh, if I go to Airmont, we can see the files that we have right here. These are everything that I've delivered over to the client. And probably what I should do is actually organize this in a folder with the name so I can actually search for the client itself. So I'm never going to actually like view files directly from this. If I need something directly, I would transfer it back to my uh, Mac Studio if I needed it again or if I wanted to send it over to a client. But again, this is just another option for you if you're somebody that is um, looking to store files directly um, to a network attached storage or if you're somebody that is wanting another redundancy solution I think this is a great choice like I said for the most part this works absolutely fantastic it works well I'm going to go ahead and actually install that update now 
since that is something that needs to be done. And to do that, you can also go directly under the update and restore and you can uh, go ahead and update settings and you can also have this to where it will automatically do it. Alrighty, but that's it. That is the Ugreen DXP 2800 network attached storage. Like I said, I'm not a super technical person. I just know what works for me. I know what doesn't work for me. And having had used a network storage solution that has been slow for the past two and a half years, this feels a lot more intuitive. It feels a lot more light speed, I guess. And for me, I just find it very, very convenient. Plus having an application on my Mac that I can quickly and easily access this with is just super, super nice. But anyways, there'll be some links in the description below if you want to check this out for yourself. Like I said, you should be able to get it a couple of different ways with drives, without drives. So if there's a preference of drive that you want, you're not married to buying it with whatever storage that they are offering. All right. I will see you in the next video. As always, stay original. I heard they checking for me, no one checking on me, so I had to go run up a check. I got the message, homie, ain't you no know, flexing on me, my attorney gon' call and collect. Blessings on blessings for me, my success has only made them envious, they got upset. I had to put all their egos in check. <laughs>